Use the graph to determine the values of x for which f of x is greater or equals to minus 9 f of x is equals to minus square root of 27x. Let's go to the graph and look for values of x for which f of x is greater or equals to minus 9. You can see here at point P, the point we're given that the y value is minus 9 and the corresponding value is 3. So 3 is one x value that we are interested in. But for which other values of x is f of x greater or equals to minus 9. Well, if you look at x is equals to 2, then our graph is greater than minus 9. And then if you look at x is equals to 1, our graph is still greater than minus 9. If you look at x is equals to 0, then our corresponding y value is equals to 0. So from x is equals to 0 to x is equals to 3, f of x is greater or equals to minus 9. So our answer will be an inequality. We need x to be between 0 and positive 3. And that is the answer to 6.1. Let's look at 6.2. Write down the equation of f inverse in the form y equals to indicate all restrictions. Right. So f of x, we know at this point that it is equals to minus the square root of 27x. To find the inverse, we need to swap x and y. So in place of y, we're going to put x. And then in place of x, we're going to put y. Now, the only thing that we need to do is to make y the subject of the formula. And by doing so, we would have found the inverse. So what can we do here at this point? We can take a square root on both sides, right? So let's go ahead and do that. x squared, that is just x squared. And then on the other hand, minus squared, that will be positive. And then we're going to lose the square root here on uh, square root of 27y. We're going to be left with 27. Let me not write that like that. We're going to be left with 27y. And if we divide both sides by 27, we're going to get y being equals to x squared divided by 27. So this is the inverse of f of x. But we are told that we need some restrictions, right? So what restrictions are we even talking about? What you have to know is that the range of the graph of your function, right, will be the domain of the inverse will be the domain of uh, the inverse. And then the domain of the original function will be the range of the inverse. That is how it works. If you look at the graph of f of x, you're going to realize that the range is y is less or equals to zero. So that tells us that the domain of our function will be x is less or equals to zero. That is the restriction we need to include them. Uh, let's move to the following question, 6.3. Sketch the graph of f inverse in your answer book. Indicate all intercepts with the axis and coordinates of one other point on your sketch. 6.3, we have f inverse being equals to x squared divided by 27. This is the same as 1 divided by 27 multiplied by x squared, right? So we have a quadratic function. We need to indicate our intercepts. Uh, so x intercept, y is equals to 0. So if we let y be equals to 0, we're going to have x squared divided by 27. Uh, if you cross multiply, you're going to realize fairly quick that x is also equals to 0. And then the y intercept will let x be equals to 0. So we're going to have y being equals to 0 divided by 27. Again, uh, the y-intercept is at 0 and 0. So that is to say that our graph should look something like this. 
right but then let's not forget that we have a restriction our restriction is that we are only interested on the values of x for which x is less or equals to zero so we actually don't have this part on our function we don't have this part because uh, at that point x is now greater than zero this is only the part we are interested in on our inverse so this is our graph what is left is for us to include one other point so you just take a point and you substitute it on f inverse f inverse you just substitute any point if we substitute to minus nine uh, uh the answer we're gonna get is gonna be positive three so we have a point somewhere here of minus nine and positive uh three right we have a coordinate here of minus nine and positive three and just like that i think uh, we are done with uh 6.3 let's look at 6.4 determine the transformation from f to g if g of x is equal to uh, the square root of 27 x uh, what is different between g of x and f of x the only difference we have is that we no longer have the minus sign here so what does that tell us well it means that g of x is equal to minus f of x because when you substitute f of x here minus and minus are going to cancel out and this is what we call a reflection about the x-axis